everyone, my name is Lena Kupina and today in the video we will discuss the latest news from the world of gymnastics. For a long time I did not make a selection with the most interesting news, so for those who do not follow the news feed on the Telegram, VK or Facebook, today there will be a lot of interesting news and for those who follow we will discuss the most important topics of the last month. So today we will talk about the innovation of Fitch, about punishment for demonstrations and propaganda. Remember what is the code of conduct? When will Russia Russia and Belarus will be allowed to compete in Fitch, what happened to Irina Viner and Alisha Rusmanov, about the injuries of Averias, and the words of the president of the technical committee about preserving gymnastics and as an Olympic discipline. Well, before starting the video, do not forget to subscribe to the channel in case you haven't done so already, so you won't miss new videos and will always be up to date with the most important news from the world of gymnastics. And also, you won't miss interesting stories about gymnasts and their careers. Well, I'm extremely grateful to every Everyone who supports me when YouTube is not monetized in Russia. I thought I might add your names to the video as a token of gratitude. Write in the comments what you think about this. Is it important for me if I can to say thank you in a more meaningful way? In Canada, the national championship ended. We generally very rarely talk about gymnastics there, but it's very peculiar there when compared with the one we talk about in Russia. Therefore, I want to talk about the results and introduce some of the girls from there. So in the all-around for seniors, Tatiana Koksanova, born in 2004 in Kishinev in the city of Moldova, won gold. She has been representing Canada since 2018. Silver at the Canadian Championship was won by Michelle Weaver, also a gymnast born in 2004. Michelle was born in Israel and started doing gymnastics at the age of two under the guidance of her mother. In 2018, she became the gymnast of the year in Canada among juniors, and the bronze of the Canadian Championship was won by Suzanne Charbassian. She was born in Canal and got into the national team in 2017. During her career, she repeatedly became a prize winner and the winner of tournaments in Canada. Another well-known Canadian gymnast who often performs at the international tournament is Carmel Camellia. She took fourth place in the all around and won the Miss Elegance in prize. Another interesting gymnast that I would like to mention is Jada Katsukevich. She is younger than her teammates, but very interesting and emotional. In Canada, they began to pay attention to her to city as a child. At the tournament, as part of the group exercise, Jada and her friends won gold medals and became the champions of Canada in 2022. But the most surprising thing is that Jada, born in 2006, is still very young, but already has medals in the senior in the team, so most likely we will still hear about her soon as a star of Canadian gymnastics. One of the most important things in the world of rhythmic gymnastics was the meeting of the Fe International Gymnastics Federation at which some issues related to rhythmic gymnastics were resolved. So far, it was interesting. At the end of 2022, a vote will be held for the adoption of new gymnastics federations. So the state of Central Africa, Chad, the Comorans, Tajikistan, and Sao Tom Principe may join. It is difficult to say if there is rhythmic gymnastics there. Google and Yandex does not give it any information about that, but maybe someone then from more developed countries in gymnastics will go there and develop our sport. Also within the framework of the meeting in rhythmic gymnastics, two judges, Sakuko Ishizaki from Japan and Yolanda Sapp from the Netherlands were awarded. Well, now to the most discussed points of the meeting. So it was decided to allow women to advertise on clothes as well as men. In our sport, all advertising is usually placed on the sleeve and with a small patch. So perhaps there will be changes in gymnastics and there will be more advertising now. Although this may not affect our gymnastics, but if suddenly it does, then perhaps this will mean more sponsors, which means gymnastics may become more watchable due to the attraction of new finance. The point that struck me the most after using Google Translate to help me translate the document. So initially, I understood that the Fitch allowed demonstrations, political, religious, and racial propaganda at the competitions, but fortunately, this has just turned out to be a translation difficulty and in fact the Fitch made changes to the code of conduct and now includes a provision to penalize any demonstration political religious or racial propaganda at competitions and if we think about rhythmic gymnastics then it's quite possible to draw a parallel with what they meant there then in theory 
they will be punished for what happened with Victoria and Priyanka at the Italian club championship and in general how will they consider what is propaganda and what isn't. As far as I know in rhythmic gymnastics they only supported Ukraine and this seems to not be bad but it can also be attributed to political propaganda. In general I'm confused as to what exactly they meant and how it would be punished but given that a similar clause has been introduced it's most likely that the gymnasts of Russia and Belarus should be allowed to participate in international competitions. Perhaps this clause is being introduced on purpose in order to return our athletes to tournaments. At least this is what I want to believe and I hope they will do it as soon as possible. It already hurts to compare girls from Russia and Belarus and not really evaluate world gymnastics and make assumptions about how girls performed at the Fitch tournaments. Write in the comments what you think about this theme of additions and whether this is a step towards returning Russia and Belarus to international tournaments. By the way, reading about the code of conduct, I was interested in what kind of document is this. In fact, there's approved rules of behavior for for gymnasts and judges at its competitions and there is a lot of interesting things to be said there including about the excessive emotions dina's dirty words about leaving the carpets including due to injuries write in the comments if you want me to tell you more about this document and we discuss why gymnasts can be punished in general and whether they are punished in fact well, without going far from the bureaucratic structure, the president of the technical committee, Noha Abu Shaban, also recently made a speech and told what is happening specifically in rhythmic gymnastics. So she has praised the new members, saying that they are very active, enthusiastic, and come up with the new ideas. She also said that it was um, Morinari Wanatabe, the president of the Fitch, who pushed the technical committee to ensure that there was more artisticity in rhythmic gymnastics. And now that the tech committee is working to make the assessment more obvious and the judges could evaluate it according to clear criteria and not subjectively. So the technical committee plans to hold a webinar for athletes so that those who perform understand the rules and how the fish works and also so that the technical committee can hear the wishes of the athletes. So according to her, it seems that rhythmic gymnastics is moving in the right direction, connecting with athletes, explaining artisticity so that there is no subjectivity. Let's hope that all of this is not just words and everything really goes towards this. We'll also know how Abu Shaban added that now it is a big problem to keep rhythmic gymnastics within the framework of Olympic Games. Apparently this problem especially acute now. Therefore, it is especially important to be honest and accurate in the assessment at the competitions after the Tokyo Olympics, when such a big scandal erupted. By the way, if anyone is not aware, Clementine's YouTube channel recently released a complete analysis of the finals of the Tokyo Olympics, and the results have been amazing. So the first three, according to her estimates, remain the same. As at the Olympics, Linoya Ashram became the first, Dina Varina the second, and Alina Gomnasco the third. But those who wrote about the fact that Arena Averina was deprived from, of bronze may remain confused after her analysis. So according to her, Arena really claimed a silver medal before the ribbon exercise and after that she became only fifth. Milena Baldassari, the Italian gymnast who took only sixth place at the Olympics, also it turns out that the judges dropped not Arisha but Milena to a greater extent. She, according to Clemences, uh, analysis became fourth in rating. So it is also surprising that the Ukrainian gymnasts Victoria Priyanka and Kristina Pogonichnia took 10th and 9th place uh, respectively. After the results of the all around according to Clementine's rating, they became 6th and 7th. So in fact, they were not given their correct marks. Well, in general, only the first three coincided with the Olympic marks. The rest has changed a lot according to the recalculation. If anyone missed it, I also filmed an analysis of the Olympics on my channel. If you don't want to look in detail at the Clementis by uh, Apartus and Algemist, then in my video I briefly talked about the main points and uh, the main three. Well, another problem is that in rhythmic gymnastics this year, there's not numerous competitions, including because of COVID in some countries and because of the ban of the of Russian and Belarusian gymnasts and because of the inability to train and perform normally for Ukrainian gymnasts. So now in rhythmic gymnastics, it is barely possible to determine the true level of international competitions and this moment clearly does not contribute to the development of gymnasts themselves and their 
and the development of rhythmic gymnastics as an Olympic sport, given that Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine have uh, some of the strongest gymnasts in the world. Let's hope that soon this will all be over and we will continue to live peacefully, calmly, and enjoy gymnastics, directing our efforts only toward the development and its popularization. Also, quite recently, information appeared in the media that Irina Alexandrovna Novina Rasmanova and Alisha Rasmanov were divorced. They lived in marriage for 30 years. Alisha Rasmanov filed for divorce. The final meeting will be held on June 7th. Many attribute this to the fact that Alisha Rasmanov filed for divorce in order to save his wealth, given that Irina Viner, as the head coach of the Russian national team, speaks too patriotically. And this is probably reflecting in Alisha Rasmanov. And for him, as a businessman, this most likely flows into tougher sanctions on business and property. Many articles are now appearing on the internet about what they share and what property they have, and also what Irina Viner got from this marriage. Irina Alexandrovna herself commented on this moment that if they agree on everything, then she will not give comments. Well, for us, as I understand it, this can also become a decrease in funding of the Russian national team. It's no secret to anyone that Alisha Rasmanov helped the national teams of gymnastics a lot. I want to believe that this divorce is just for show and averting eyes. In fact, they are doing well and with gymnastics, everything will still be fine. Also, before the upcoming tournament, Dina and Irina Averinas, according to Irina Alexandrovna, do not complain about anything and the injuries uh, do not bother them, including Dina's back. So we will probably see the girls in perfect shape in Dubai, although the girls themselves give a rather strange comment before the upcoming tournament, saying that they do not want to assess their condition, that they are alive and thank God. Let's hope that everything will remain the same and everyone will be alive and well. But for today, I'm still waiting in the comments for questions, what I put forward for discussion throughout the video. Let's chat. Well, remember that I all love you very much and bye bye.